I get so excited for this particular topic because as I was doing a little bit of a pre-interview research with our two guests that we have here, I'm learning that I don't know near as much as I think I know when it comes to privacy and it becomes something important to share with everyone. So let me start by introducing our guest, Michelle. Uh, let me, I, don't, I always mispronounce last names, so uh, how do you say your last name, Denity? Denity, just like Kennedy oh. with a D as oh, in okay, Donald. that works. And your role is? The Vice President and Chief Privacy Officer for Cisco. Chief Privacy Officer, okay. And Vice, Vice President as well. <laughs> and then also, let's see, uh, Lorena. That's I, I, right. <laughs> I'm so pressured to say these names wrong. Uh, tell us your role. So I'm the Emir, the Data Protection and Privacy Officer for Cisco, okay. and I am a part of Michelle's team. Okay, so you're the European counterpart to your global leadership. Yes. Hopefully, yeah. I With hope that. so, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay, so on the subject of privacy, as we were talking about earlier, this notion that, um, well, one key theme we talk about Cisco Live and is, is ever present at Cisco, is that we're creating a lot of data. You know, and we create a lot of, we, we, we're all about helping create and move that data around and such like this, but you were telling me that there are implications that come along with that that are important for customers, well, whether you're a Cisco customer or not, it, they become very important to understand. Can you explain that Absolutely. further? Absolutely, whether you're currently a Cisco cus customer or not, we hope we all are, of course. 80% right. um, of the world's data goes through a Cisco system at, at one point during its life cycle or not. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's just our customer data that's being curated or held or managed on Cisco property. That means services that we provide, gear that we've provided, uh, clouds that we offer, collaboration tools that we offer to our customers, et cetera. People who are connecting in any sort of transactional way and data that is flowing back and forth is going over a Cisco network. Okay. In the past, we believed that we were just sort of the dumb pipe solder it together and go away and sell the next one. Yeah. But as you can see, our business is transforming along with everyone else's in, in the land of digitization. Yep. Say that one three times fast. I can't, I was <laughs> glad you attempted it. I, know, yeah. I, was, I was feeling kind of good about that. But as we, as we recognize the power and the gravitas of data, if you will, it's not some cheap thing you put in storage, it's something to drive your business. Right. So as that value goes up, we also have to recognize how valuable that data networking those data services and those security services are for every single one of our customers and everyone with whom they interact. So, I want to make sure, I'm gonna, I, I probably should have done this at the top, but just to make sure I understand, how do you describe your role when you're speaking to customers and you're, I, I'm guessing, I don't know this for sure, does every company have a chief privacy officer or is that a relatively new area that people are understanding there's a distinction there that needs to be recognized? They're, in my dreams, everyone has a, ch a chief right. privacy officer. Um, it's a relatively new role in the state of you know, history. We're about 20 years old in, in this profession. We sort of free ride on top of the security people that came uh, before us. It, security is a much more tangible part of my world, right? It's, right? it's once you've decided the value of that data property, whether it's intellectual property or, or personally identifiable information, security is how you make it confidential, or, or one of the confidential, confidentiality levels is sharing, right? Yeah. So CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and accessibility, that's the mantra of the security guy. Right. So think about that as all of the things that you do to operationalize right. data. Data privacy and the practice of data protection is really understanding what that data is, what is the content, what is the value, how does it flow proportionally, and how do you manage it as an asset? So if you think about the, the role of the CPO, as I like to explain it to our customers in particular is, you would never do business without a, a chief financial officer, but that's only a role that's about 100 years old. Yeah, You yeah. know, everybody would just have to kind of like do what they did. Now, can you imagine running a Cisco without a Kelly Kramer? No way. Right. Oh no, not after, especially after you met her. Yeah. Well, especially after you met her. Yeah. I mean, everyone needs a Kelly Kramer. If you could clone yeah. that woman, my gosh, and it would be a better world. But so you think about this chief privacy officer really managing data assets in, in a similar fashion. Right. You understand what your apportionment of data is that runs the business and drives the business. And we work with our legal people, our technical people, our training people to make sure that you're governing it according to our policies and standards and the expectations of our customers and employees. So Lorena, th this sounds very simple to me. <laughs> and I'm thinking, <laughs> you just have Europe. Yeah. Uh, to worry <laughs> about. And Russia and Middle East and Africa, but yeah, I'm all fine. <laughs> How important has this kind of thing become from a geographical level? How do you begin to look at things differently with, with customers that would fall under um, your purview, so to speak? And her role is brand new. 
Ah, uh, yeah. It is brand well, new. Welcome. So you were saying about yeah. every company should have a chief privacy officer. Well, uh, with the laws that are changing, especially in my um, region, uh, the role of a privacy officer is just increasing. That is mainly due to two things, I would say. One is the regulatory environment. Mm -hmm. So we have new laws popping up, namely uh, the unfamous or famous, uh, the general data protection regulation in Europe. It which is so big much better when she says it than yeah. I do. Yeah, it sounds cool. <laughs> the GDPR, I think you told me, right? Yeah, and uh, and it's actually the land for 28, the the law of the land for 28 countries right okay. now, for all Europe basically, and it's now becoming like really um, amplified by laws in Turkey, in uh, in in South Africa. So uh, we're also in Russia. Surprisingly, they have a very similar law to the one we have. So the way I look at it, it's I look at it from a way that's reassuring because there is a lot of consistency in terms and how people per, um, really understand what data is. Because data, it's in in my region, is seen as a very important value because it's just how you do business today. Business right. today is based on value. So the insight that you can really uh, get from data. It's really what it drives the digital innovation for many of people in my region. On the other hand, you also need to battle with the regulatory environment. So it's a yeah. pretty interesting time, I would say, for my region and um, for leading in this space. Because it sounds like what you're saying is with, with uh, <laughs> as we start to collect these uh, more and more data, there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's something we need to understand that there's a responsibility that begins to come with that and the government is starting to step in in a more official way to say, Maybe not everybody is treating it the way that they should. You know, we certainly started with HIPAA and privacy uh, type things that were obvious from a medical perspective. Uh, but you're saying, the, so the GDPR is going to go into effect for European businesses um, and people that do business? Or no, correct well, me. No, I will correct yeah. you on that. So it's not only for European business, so that's the difference that was be, um, with respect to the before okay. um, regulatory framework. The GDPR applies to any business that use the data of people located in Europe. So imagine okay. you're here now, that applies to you as well. You're protected under GDPR. Like right now, just because I'm here? It just because oh. you're here in Barcelona. I'm probably already in trouble, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're not. <laughs> the business that use your you're data. You're protected. Then oh, Cisco's protected. got my, okay. But it, it's a very key point, what you made earlier. It's really about being accountable and responsible. If you really want to use the data as an asset in your organization, then you need to be responsible on how you use them on why you collect them, why do you use them, and how do you protect them during their data management life cycle. Um, okay. So it's really becoming part of the business. It's not a job for legal, for privacy officer. It really needs to go across your, the entire organization, I would say. Well, so as we wrap things up here in the final minute, uh, this I didn't have this question necessarily pre-worked out, but I am just curious. It feels like, is there a challenge with defining data that falls? Because it seems like, from a technology standpoint, like I know what data is. But it sounds like there's a much more nuanced understanding of what it is because defining, again, I'll switch back to technology roots. De uh, I, you know, you're impressed when a company can define, this is my most important data so that I can put quality of service around it right. as it travels. But it feels like there's another level of understanding here because we're going to be held accountable for what we do, how we store, how we dispose of, um, and who we share stuff with, I would imagine. Uh, these are all things that start becoming very, very important? Absolutely, and, and I think this is the wake up call, particularly in the world of technology and technologists, because so many people say, wow, personal data, that's like what I do in the bathroom, or covering up secrets. And actually, data protection rules and regulations cover data that individually identifies an individual human either on its own, or when combined with other data elements. There's the rub. Bam. Because, because I feel like, <laughs> Individually, we all go, I don't really care about this piece of data, it's not that big a deal, so I give it away for the convenience of it. But then you, uh, but you get enough pieces that don't mean anything by themselves, but when correlated, suddenly the rich meaning that comes out of it, and companies are profiting off of that information because now we've become the product, and we think we're getting something for free, but in reality, uh, we're actually just volunteering our information. And this is where all the stuff collides. I mean, just yesterday, there, there was a revelation that a, a fitness watch company's data was being used to look at and they figured out where the military bases were, some which were identified, some which were not. Because they're working out more? The level of workouts. <laughs> and this particular app is a, a social app between yep. competitive people who are 
professional athletes, if you will. Um, and so now you're seeing physical security, data security, data privacy, data protection, and we're going to see more and more of that. And this is why we take a very expansive view on what information is actually bound yeah. and covered. It's not just getting into compliance with a law that is truly expensive if you screw it up. Right. It really is figuring out a way forward in a digitized era, and that's what this is really all about. So I feel like GDPR and everything you're talking about here really is that next level of beyond HIPAA, beyond Sarbanes we talked about a long time ago that are still remain important, credit card um, enforcement and stuff that still, unfortunately, we have to go so much on. This becomes so important as we move forward. Michelle, yeah. thank you. Lorena, thank you very much. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing and sharing that good word. Thank you guys so much. Keep your stuff private.